This is gonna be a controversial video, man. I don't know. I don't know if I should do this one. A whole foods diet is better than an ultra processed foods diet. Basically, you can think of whole foods as things that come from nature that haven't been completely processed to the point where you can't even recognize them anymore. Oreo, not a whole food that is an ultra processed food. What's going on guys? This is Brayden from Advancement Hockey Advising here and today we have a very spicy controversial video for you and that is talking about the top five nutrition principles that hockey players should follow. So I want to make this video here for the simple reason that nutrition really impacts how we perform. The fuel you feed your body as an athlete, as a hockey player, really impacts how you perform on the ice and how you feel. It could be the difference between us feeling extremely sluggish and tired out there and really not playing well, or the difference between you know feeling great where when the, the game ends, you're like, you want more, right? You're craving for more, you're almost pissed off that the, the buzzer rang at the end that you have to go home, you know, you have more energy. So nutrition can really make that big of an impact, which is why I wanna make this video. Now, if you do any kind of research out there on nutrition it's gonna be extremely controversial you're gonna get into really big rabbit holes like I did in the past couple years and some people saying this that like keto versus vegan versus this versus that it's extremely controversial it's almost like a religion I I think I this video might not even be you know platform because it's so controversial even though I'm trying to give you guys simple principles here so anyways I've done a ton of research on my own I experimented a ton on my own and I think over the years I've really found out what works for me I'm still experimenting still trying to figure things out but I think I've seen the patterns or the the general principles to follow that have worked for me and that I've seen work for other people here so instead of you guys wasting your time trying to do all these different types of diets and not really having them work for you I'm gonna give you guys five core simple principles that I think are tried and true that could probably be tested against a lot of scrutiny and that actually work and have some evidence behind them okay so I hope you guys enjoy this video here and enjoy these principles let's dive into them right now all right so nutrition principle number one here and I think this is the building block of everything when it comes to these principles, it's the most important. I think that is to prioritize protein into your diet. I think if you prioritize a high quality source of protein and you build everything else around that, everything's just better. You're, you build muscle a lot easier. You become leaner and your muscle composition is much better. Your immune system gets strengthened because that's the building blocks for your immune system. Your cells and your metabolism works better. Honestly, everything works better when you prioritize protein in the diet. I've done experiments of you know prioritizing carbs, prioritizing fats and prioritizing protein. And in my experience, when I prioritize protein and use the other fuel sources around the protein in a high protein diet, it's really uh, the difference maker. It's what made me feel the best on the ice and made my body composition way better. Now on that note, there's a big debate out there between animal protein versus plant protein, which is better. A lot of people say the literature makes uh, gives the advantage to the plant protein, but the evidence is quite weak. If you look at it, it's mainly epidemiological studies that are founded from nutrition surveys, which isn't very strong data and there's a slight advantage at best when you're looking at plant protein in the literature. So I think the evidence is quite weak. In my opinion, I think the evidence for animal protein, although not exactly there in the literature, I just know from my personal experience and other people using it, it's they usually have a better advantage and their body composition ends up being better and there's less problems down the road. Is it impossible to really have a great uh, kick-ass diet off of plant protein? No, but it is much harder and I would say evolutionarily speaking, it might make more sense to go the animal protein route. Now, you can have a nice mix. I'm all about omnivore diet, eating as much as you can. But if I had to build my diet and really get my protein needs from a complete amino acid profile, I would go the animal protein. That's what I've done. I've tried both and animal protein has worked for me. Now again, do whatever works for you. I know people are gonna come at me for saying this, but that's just my two cents when it comes to this issue here on nutrition. So the animal versus plant protein thing out of the way, the final message here is to prioritize protein and build the rest of your diet around it. All right, principle number two in nutrition, and that is to eat diverse whole foods. Couple things to unpack from this statement. What is whole foods? That's the number one thing. Basically, you can think of whole foods as things that come from nature that haven't been completely processed to the point where you can't even recognize them anymore. Oreo, not a whole food that is an ultra processed food. Certain things that we might think are healthy, like cereal, ultra processed food, probably not the best thing for you. Whole foods are more like fruits, so apples, grapes, strawberries, kiwis, all that, that. Uh, veggies, you know, so broccoli, Brussels sprouts, lettuce, all of those things, okay? You can also think of meat, right? Meat comes from nature, so you can think of steak, chicken, you know, um, veal, anything around those lines. You can think of fish, right? You can think of salmon, cod, tuna, all that stuff. 
all of these things here are whole foods and there's countless literature that this is a core principle here supporting that a whole foods diet is better than an ultra processed foods diet okay and i think it goes without saying it's the food that we evolved to eat over millennia so it makes more sense to eat these foods than foods that have been engineered in the past 60 years to be super hyper palatable and ultra processed okay so if you're ever wondering like a core principle to guide you protein like obviously is number one in my head but if i'm going to choose to eat let's say something versus something else i'm always saying okay which one is least processed is more made from nature. So a kiwi versus, you know, cereal or a pop tart or something, for example. So I think I pretty much beat down the whole foods versus ultra processed foods point. And hopefully I convinced you guys that whole foods is better. The second point that I made was diversity. Okay? It's really important to diversify the amount of foods that you have to build a strong, diverse microbiome. There's a lot of evidence showing that the more diverse your microbiome, the healthier the host is. Okay. So it's really important to eat as many different foods as possible and not fall into these habits of eating the same thing over and over and over again. There's a reason why as humans, we want to seek novelty when it comes to food. That's one of the reasons to build a more robust robust gut microbiome. So really important to do this. By doing this, you'll avoid like a lot of food sensitivities. You probably know as people who only want to eat a few little things, if they eat, you know, something that's outside the food they're used to, they're not going to feel great. They might get some IBS symptoms and all that kind of stuff. It's usually because they, they haven't been eating a diverse amount of things. So really important to eat a diverse uh, set of things. One for microbiome di diversity, but two, not to have uh, so many food sensitivity sensitivities that can come up. One point on this actually is that if you do notice that some foods are slowing you down that you might have a food sensitivity something that's worked really well and that i've done with a few things like gluten for example is eliminating it for a little bit and then slowly starting to reintroduce it back in when i'm feeling really good when you slowly start reintroducing it back in your immune system kind of builds up a tolerance to it over time so for there's more advanced ways of kind of going about this and talk to your doctor that's uh, specialized in this if you want to you know work on food allergies let's say but when it comes to food sensitivity i would say that you know slowly trying to reintroduce it back in is usually the way to go to eliminate that sensitivity uh, after some time. All right, so principle number three here, the amount of carbs and fats that you can afford to eat completely depends on your activity level. So once you've accounted for protein and you're building around it, the two other major macronutrient groups are the carbohydrates and the fats, okay? And the amount that you can eat really completely depends on how active you are. Now, fortunately for you guys as athletes, you're very active and you have a high metabolism for the most part. If you're moving around, if you're actually doing uh, a lot of work on the ice, you're working hard, in the gym and all that stuff you need a lot of fuel to meet your caloric needs because your protein needs are met through your diet right so because of this this is nice that's why you know athletes can eat almost whatever they want i don't recommend that but you see a lot of cases where some athletes just eat whatever they want they still like don't get fat or anything like that it's for that reason it's because they they have such a high output that they need a high input of fuel so let's start with carbs here carbs are more of the fast type of fuel right the fuel that's going to give the really explosive power output that's what carbs are mainly used for versus fat is more like the long-term storage type of fuel let's say you exhaust all your carbohydrate resources that's what allows you to keep going the extra mile that keep pushing albeit not at the same pace it allows you to keep pushing a little bit longer okay so that's like carbs versus fat in terms of your utility i'm definitely grossly uh, simplifying it but that's the way to kind of go to think about it in a simple layman's terms now i know both of these macronutrients have been demonized in the past but honestly it's there are clean versus uh very you know dirty uh, carb and fat sources in both uh, macronutrient groups. So let's talk like maybe some of the clean carbs here. So for example, you could think of potatoes. There's a bunch of different kinds of potatoes. You can think of sweet potatoes. You can think of rice. Uh, some that are okay that I don't think are the most clean, but that are okay is bread, you know, pasta. You know, they're not the best, but, but they're there. There's other types of seeds or grains that you can look at as well. A millet is a really clean type of grain. It's very niche, but it is very clean. And there's others that you can look into as well. But these are the more clean carbs, okay? They're starchy carbohydrates. They take longer to, uh, to break down in your gut and therefore it doesn't give as big of an insulin spike, okay? But anyways, these are the cleaner type of carbs. The less clean ones would be like cereal, Pop-Tarts, all that kind of stuff, okay? So this, this is how you can kind of think about and frame, uh, build your meals and your nutrition around carbs. When it comes to fat, there's clean types of fats versus dirty types of fats. The more clean ones would be things like from salmon, okay? Salmon's a really high source of omega-3 content, plus you got a good amount of protein in there. So salmon's great for you. Honestly, it's one of my 
my go-tos. Uh, any other types of fish is, is good too. There's nuance with fish, but I would say fish overall is very good. Olive oil is a really, really clean uh, source of fat. I really uh, encourage people to really use olive oil when they're cooking and all that kind of stuff. Coconut oil, I really like it too for cooking different recipes, especially the more sweeter ones. Um, you know, avocados are a great staple in any meal and a lot of meals could put avocados in there. The avocado oil is also great, okay? Things to stay away from are the, you know, polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids, so the PUFAs that they're known as, so this is all like your seed oils, all that really cheap fats. Uh, you wanna stay away from those and a lot of like trans fats, like greasy things, those are the bad types of fats that you wanna stay away from. One thing about fats too that I forgot to mention is that they're actually the building blocks for a lot of your hormones like uh, cholesterol, uh, testosterone, cortisol, and many others, okay? So a lot of these fat-soluble hormones are made from these fats that you ingest, okay? So really, really important that you need to ingest fats. I know like carbs have been demonized in the past, fats have been demonized, but I think you need both, especially as an athlete that's, that's really active. I think overall, my take from this whole section here, this nutrition principle, is when you're really active, you have to match your caloric needs with the uh, good sources of carbs and fats. All right, so principle number four here, it's less nutrition and more of a supplement. It's the only supplement I really encourage everybody to take, and that is vitamin D, okay? So more specifically, vitamin D3 and K2 combined, okay? Now, a lot of us are deficient in vitamin D and we don't even know it. Most of the population is, especially if you're living more in the Northern Hemisphere, like I am in Canada. Even people that are living more in the South, a lot of them still are deficient because our modern lives, we're inside all day, we're not really playing outside and all this stuff. So for a lot of us, we do need to take it in supplement form. And I push this on almost everybody that I talk to unless they're outside all day. I'm not really gonna have a huge like in-depth discussion as to what it does, but it really boosts everything in your body, your metabolism, your immune system, pretty much everything. And it really works on so many different pathways that you need to have your vitamin D levels adequate. And most of us just aren't there. And for me, it's I experimented with so many different supplements and this is the only one I can for sure say makes a huge difference and that is worth taking and it's pretty cheap. So I would say overall, find yourself a good source and you're gonna thank me later for doing it. Nutrition principle number five here, that's not so much what to eat or anything like that, it's more of a principle to follow, and that is the 80-20 rule. And I use this with a lot of different things in life, but especially for nutrition here. And what it is, is basically, if you eat 80% clean, you can afford to eat about 15 to 20% uh, not so clean, okay? So if I'm really, really good, I have my main principles dialed in, everything else we talked about is dialed in, my exercise is dialed in, my sleep's dialed in, okay? And I eat 80% really clean food, I can eat 20% junk food, and I still feel great, and I still feel fine. Okay, I'm obviously not gonna eat eat like a crush a huge pizza and bowl of ice cream and stuff before a really important meeting where I have to think well because I'm gonna be sluggish but I can afford to eat it on the weekends go out with friends you know maybe drink a little bit of alcohol all that stuff even though it's quote unquote, not healthy, you have to live a little and you need a bit of a balance. And I think 80-20 is a great, great balance and a great principle to base off of. We're not robots, we're humans, we're meant to enjoy the pleasures of life as well. And I think 80-20 is a great principle to kind of base off of, to live a happy, fulfilling life, but still feel healthy and more clean in the process, okay? So I really encourage you guys to follow this principle as you're going on and it's gonna pay dividends for you in the future and in your hockey career. Okay, so we ran through this exhaustive list and all my justifications and explanations for it, but I think these top five principles are actually gonna help you guys out. Hopefully I don't get chewed out in the comment section by either vegans or keto advocates or whatever. I'm just kind of trying being somewhere in the middle and giving you guys what worked for me. But here's a quick recap of our list here of the top five principles when it comes to nutrition that's gonna help you as a hockey player. Number one, prioritize protein. Number two, eat a diverse set of whole foods. Number three, the amount of carbs and fats you can afford to eat depends on your activity level. And as hockey players and athletes, you actually have a higher amount of them that you're able to eat. Number four, get your vitamin D levels up. And number five, follow the 80-20 principle when it comes to nutrition. And there you have it, guys. That is the video when it comes to the top five principles with nutrition. I hope you guys got some value out of it. If you did, absolutely destroy that like button if you haven't already. It goes a long way for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another mo video moving forward. If you have any questions for me, any questions for our team, anything whatsoever, drop a comment down below or send us an email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Possible. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on that next video.